necessaries are embarked. Farewell. Ma. Oh, oh, and sister, as the winds give benefit and as convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? <laughs> um, for Hamlet and the trifling of his favour, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood. A violet in the youth of primy nature. Forward, not permanent. Sweet, not lasting. The perfume and suppliance of a minute, no more. No more, but so. Think it no more. Perhaps he loves you now. And now no soil nor cautel doth besmirch the virtue of his will. But you must fear. His greatness weighed, his will is not his own. For he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself, for on his choice depends the safety and the health of this whole state. And therefore must his choice be circumscribed unto the voice and yielding of that body whereof he is the head. Then if he says he loves you, it fits your wisdom so far to believe it, as he in his particular act and place may give his saying deed which is no further than the main voice of Denmark goes with all. <sighs> then weigh what loss your honour may sustain if with too credent ear you list his songs, or you lose your heart, or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity. Fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, my dear sister and keep you in the rear of your affection out of the shot and danger of desire. <sighs> oh, be wary then. Best safety lies in fear. Youth to itself rebels, though none else near. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. <sighs> But good, my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. Now oh, fear me not, I stay too long. But here my father comes. A double blessing is a double grace. Occasion smiles upon a second leave. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee, and these few precepts in thy memory see thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple unto thy soul with hoops of steel. But do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new-hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel. But being in, bear it that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thine judgment. Costly thy habit as thy first can buy, but not expressed in fancy, but rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. Neither a borrower nor a lender be for loan. Oft loses this. both itself and friend. And borrowing of the age of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. <laughs> Farewell. My blessing season this in the... Oh. <laughs> Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. The time uh, invites you go, your servant tends. Farewell, Ophelia. <clears throat> and remember well what I have said to you. It is in my memory locked. And you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. What is it, Ophelia, he has said to you? Oh, so please you something touching the Lord Hamlet. 
Very well bethought. She has told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you. And you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. If it be so, and so it is put on me, and that in way of caution, I must tell you, you do not understand yourself so clearly as it behoves my daughter and your honour. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Ha! You speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary, I'll teach you. Think yourself a baby. But you obtain these tenders for true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or, not to crack the wind of the poor phrase running it thus, you'll tender me a fool. My lord, he hath importuned me with love in honourable fashion. Ay, fashion, you may call it. Go to, go to. And hath given countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. Ay, springes to catch woodcocks. I do know when the blood burns how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. These blazes, daughter, giving more light than heat, extinct in both, you must not take for fire. From this time be somewhat scanter of your maiden presence. For Lord Hamlet, believe so much in him that he is young, <laughs> and with a larger tether may he walk than may be given you. In few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows. This is for all. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. Come your ways. I shall obey, my lord. 